Hello class, uh, for today we'll be talking about expected values uh, moving on from permutations and combinations uh, portion. This is still under the topic of probability and uh, for expected values you'll have to follow a very simple formula and then you just have to compute the uh, how to solve the questions. First let's take some notes. Uh, this would be the formula that I would like all of you guys to have. Now if you guys just take a look at this it might turn out to be a little bit um, kind of tricky to understand but an expected value is basically what can you expect out of an outcome for uh, let's say a, a game or something as simple as rolling a dice and which we'll go over an expected value is sort of like trying to find the average of all the outcome based on the based on the value and the probability so when we talk about expected values, and this is the formula, x's are the representative values of the outcomes. So x's like it could be money, it could be simple numbers, it could be it could be just anything, depending on the context. The probability you guys already know that it's going to be like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, like it's going to be decimals or fractions. And what you're going to do is you're going to simply take each of those and multiply them and just add them all up. That's the main idea, that you just have to add up all the outcomes based upon its probability. So for example, let's say I give you this question. What is the expected value when rolling a standard number cube? So when you're rolling a standard number cube, you have to find out the probability of all the outcomes and all the values. When you're rolling a standard number cube, that's, that means just simple, you know, when you're playing Monopoly or something, you have a six-sided cube. Uh, you're going to get six different values. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the values. And you want to find the probability in which how each of those six things is going to occur. So, for example, what is your chance of rolling a one? One out of six. And it's going to be one out of six for each and every single one of these guys. And so when you actually multiply, that's your x1, p1. This is your x2, p2. This is your x3, p3. And you get the idea that when you multiply each of them, you get the actual value in which the value times the probability is going to occur. And these are the values that you're going to consider when you're doing the expected value. So when you add them all of these up, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, that would be 21 out of 6, which turns out to be about 3.5 exactly. So your expected value is 3.5. Now, what does this number represent? It means that when you're rolling a standard number Q, the average in which what you could expect to get is going to be 3.5, which I know that physically it's not possible, but if you were to do this over and over and over again, and you take the average of all of the outcomes, they will turn out to be close to being 3.5. That's what you could expect to get. Of course, it's not a guarantee, but it's a good average. Okay. So let's think about this question. What is the expected value of the sum when rolling a two standard number cubes? So when you're rolling two standard number cubes, you have to consider it a little bit more differently than saying, okay, I'm going to get a um, summation of those values. So it's good. you're going to get anywhere from between 2 and 12. Those are the values you're going to get when you're rolling a, you know, two cube, two dice on, like, let's say, a monopoly. And 2 through 12 means that, okay, I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You cannot assume that the probability for all of these guys will be equal because getting a two, like, you know, one, two like this is going to be much difficult than getting a three where you can roll two and one this way, or you can roll one and two this way. There could be multiple different ways. Okay. Even rolling a four, there's going to be more combinations because you're going to two, two, three, one, or one, three like this. So you can, the probability for all of these will be different. And how do we consider that? Well, if you were to draw a chart, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you're going to see how much chances you're going to be finding to get a 2, 3, or 4. So adding these up, we'll get 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, and then seven. And then eight will be next. Nine, 10, 11, 12. These will be the, the summation chart in which you, when you roll a two standard dice, this is what you're gonna get. So your chance of actually rolling a two, it's really minimal. How many chances? Well, you're going to get any one out of this entire possible outcomes you're going to get, which is out of 36. How do I know it's 36? Well, that's 6 times 6 this way. So that's 1 out of 36 this way. 3 actually you find by, by having it here and here. Now, you might say, well, there's the order really doesn't matter, right? Well, you're right. The order doesn't matter. But the way that you can get a 3, you're going to get way more chances of getting a 3 than actually getting a two because you can only get two one way getting one and getting one for the second one like there's only one way that's going to happen but for this it's a little bit different that's two out of 36 getting four you're going to get more chance that's three out of 36 and so on okay because the order for these things which you might argue that they don't matter however the the ways that in which you can get them they're going to be multiple so yes you might have to consider the permutation aspect of this, but it's not really just NPR or N, oh, my, uh, the pencil's not working. So, let's see. So, you don't have to, con you, you don't have to consider whether it's going to be like NPR or NCR, like permutation or combination, but they will still have some sort of a uh, effect in which how many chances you're going to be getting for these types of questions. Okay. All right. So, um, let's say also um, consider a question like this one. Okay. So there is there are two questions into one. The one says a charity is considering a fundraising event. So here, in which donors will pay one dollars to spin the wheel three times. What is the expected payoff to um, what is the expected payoff for the charity for each game? Okay. So uh, we're talking about fundraising event in which donors will pay one dollars to spin the wheel three times there are six possible outcomes three of the possible outcomes are even numbers spin three times get three even numbers win an item worth four dollars okay so if you want to get let's say um three even numbers win an item worth four dollars what is your chance of actual winning so you want to find out what's your chance of winning and then you want to find you want to multiply with this value, right? Which is four dollars. But you also want to find out the chance in which you're going to lose, but that's going to subtract you one. So um, the value in which you're going to win, the chance that you're going to win, it's not really uh, like a hundred percent, right? It's not guaranteed. So the expected value of you winning and winning that four dollars, it's this. And the expected payoff for the charity is that you need to subtract one dollars at the one dollar at the end is because you're paying that one dollar to spin it. Okay, so let's consider the situation. Six possible outcomes and three other possible outcomes are even numbers. So that's all of these chances are one sixth, right? And then I want to spin it three times. So what's your chance of the first spin when you spin it for the first time that you're going to get an even number? The chance of chance of that happening is really just one out of two because there's two, four, and six. That's your chance of getting an even number. And what's your chance of getting that three times? Well, it's one out of two, one out of two, one out of two, which is one out of eight. So there's a one eighth chance in which you're going to win, in which you're going to take that dollar, like four dollars, and you're going to multiply to them. So the chance of you winning four dollars is actually one eighth, seven out of eight chance that you're really gonna lose because you gotta win, or you gotta get even numbers three times in a row. And so that's gonna be four out of eight, which is 0 0.5. So your expected payoff is 50 cents. Now let's say that you pay a dollar to play this game. Will you play this? Absolutely not because your expected value of you winning this charity, well, even though it's for a good cause, that you're only thinking about winning. This is why the expected value is so important when you're playing a game of blackjack, poker, or um, you know, slot machines. You know, we always say the slot machines, the house always wins because the expected payoff is not so great. Now, if your expected payoff is 0 0.5 and you're using dollars every time when you play, you don't want to play this game. So completely, your your expected outcome is negative 0 0.5 dollars, which is not a lot, but as long as the expected value is a negative number, 
you do not, do not play this game. That's the bottom line. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you a couple of questions dealing with expected values. For today, you're just going to be finding expected values of different outcomes, whether you play this game or not, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, you'll be doing maybe uh, three, four questions for today, and that's going to be it. Uh, um, finish them by tomorrow. Okay. It's not due by today. Tomorrow, uh, 12 p.m. Thank you. Have a good day.